Okay, here we go. Cynthia Allen back here for our last panel discussion tonight, and I'm going to introduce you to our guests in just a moment, but I do want to cover a couple of things because while this is officially the last day of the summit, we've been busy putting together some, some pretty cool stuff for you. So on um, November 12th, so you have tomorrow, you are going to watch the rest of, of today's sessions, will be your last 24 hours of today's sessions. And November 12th, we have a bonus day of live sessions, very similar to these panel discussions where you can come in and ask questions, except you will be able to have your cameras on for these. And the other ones, we've not been able to do that. At 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we've got Dolly McKenna, uh, Mena Dak, who's going to be talking about adulting with a disability, the road to a meaningful life. She's also a bioethicist, and she's going to be talking about some of the issues around uh, ethics and working with children with disability. At 1 p.m., we have Silva Lucanen and Tanya Winters, and they're going to be talking about dance as integration. Very lovely company out of Texas that um, uses dances with dancers with all types of range of movement and capacity mm -hmm. in their in their performances. At 4 p.m., we're going to have Anat Benyel and Martha Herbert, Dr. Martha Herbert. They're going to be talking about potentiating the brain for spontaneous discovery, invention, solutions, and potent mm -hmm. learning. And at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we have Carla Oswell Reed, and she will be answering your questions. That's the entire session is to give parents or people who work with children a chance to tune in and ask a very specific question about something you're working with with your child or a child that's in your life at, that you would like some help with because Carla has a lot of background in making adaptations and, and skillful lessons that parents or caregivers can participate in. So I hope that you're going to be part of that. And then... It's going to turn out that we're going to give you an encore day on November 13th because we've heard from so many of you that you needed another day. We'll open up the entire summit for just 24 hours, and then you'll get a chance to um, see whatever you missed, whatever you missed. So I'm very happy now to introduce you to Donald Riker. He is an artist, a brother, a son, an uncle, a service dog owner, a friend. He has artwork on display in Arizona in the Xanadu Gallery in Pine Top, and he hopes to open his own gallery in a few years. Welcome, Donald. Hey. Good to have you. And we hey. also have here Anthony Barnes. And Anthony, Hello. hi. Anthony hi. Uh, is here to help translate a bit for us as needed, and also uh, knows Donald pretty well. works with Works with him a lot. So. Uh, very nice to have you, Donald. And I'm going to, I want to, I guess I do want to start with a couple questions. Then I would like to show a video of you producing your artwork and then we can go from there. Does that sound okay? <laughs> Good. So, um, one of the reasons it was so interesting to ask you to be a part of this is that you are an artist and that's, mm -hmm. uh, we love creative expression and we like to include that as part of summits but also because you are someone who uh, had, a, had a mother who uh, ended up helping you explore through the Feldenkrais method. Mm. <laughs> so I'm gonna start right off with a hard one. Can you say something about what do you think or feel or how has the Feldenkrais method been of value to you in your life? I think you started around the age seven. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When? Oh. I was seven. Oh. I was working, working with oh. someone oh. and they. they did help him with with sitting up yeah 
Да. Да. First time. So when he was young, um, that was a, he had difficulty sitting down. So a friend of his um, helped him sitting up. You, with the method, right? As I recall, tell me if this is wrong. You're, you had a substitute physical therapist who was also trained in the Feldenkrais method. He's saying yes. Uh -huh. And then, and the, and you got the first experience of really sitting up. <laughs> which is pretty darn cool, right? Ages <laughs> and sitting up, fantastic. So you uh, continued to have the Feldenkrais work and I think also probably some of the Anat Banyel method. <laughs> you're at least your growing up years. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so we have like a little um, snapshot of, of why we are particularly interested in you for the summit so now uh and let me also say we, his mother andrea bowers was scheduled to be with us and she's sick so that's uh why you see andrea missing and you see that anthony is uh stepping in to, to help us uh fill in at least some of the gaps that donald's unable to maybe express easily so let's take a look at donald's artwork and his process of producing art. And then we can come back and start to ask some more uh, meaty questions. And if you've just come for the first time tonight to a Q&A, what you do, or to one of these panel discussions is you put your questions in the Q&A and then I'll start going through them uh, along with some questions that people submitted ahead of time or some of my own questions. So here we go with that. It's a video that's about, um, four minutes long and I think it's very worth watching.
Okay. Let me close that window. I want to share something different with you, which is to, to get a chance to see a little bit of the artworks that we're talking about. So I'll click on just a few pictures here so we can see something a little bit larger. As we saw, Donald was in the process of creating in that particular one. So I'm not sure. Donald, is this a recent or an older one with your oranges? <laughs> older one? Older. And I, I, uh, I'm going to just click around because I see you love animals. That's clear. Mm. Lot of animals. Mm. And I think these are ones that you have available for purchase on your site. And the ones that are in the art galleries are a bit different. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Okay. So just to, just to give you a little bit of a feel for that before I stop the screen share. Good. Thank you. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful work. And um, I just really um, think maybe I'd like to know, is this what you dreamed about as a child, becoming an artist? No. No. I, I was wanting to going to be a Video editor? Video editor. Ah, okay. And so what happened? What was like the moment that you thought, I'm going to think I'm going to do art? From video editing to art. When? 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 My? Yeah. You're when you're what? When my yeah. teacher yeah. did hey. a did hey. say uh. I hey. think who you uh. would uh. like painting. painting. Okay, so you had a teacher that encouraged you. Mm -hmm. And yes. then I, go ahead. He said yes. yes. He's agreeing. Okay. And um, I believe that you had a family that was pretty resourceful. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and, and you wanted a headset, but you guys couldn't afford it, so you began to get used to using the, is it a construction hat that you use? Uh, yes. Yeah, that you adapt. It's, it's uh, okay, good. So we're gonna start going through some other questions and Anthony has told me that some of these questions are things that he uh, helps Donald answer on a regular basis. So he may, you may see uh, sometimes Anthony answering them because they already have an answer that they use out in the public all the time. And other times um, Donald will be answering and Anthony will be uh, taking the time to translate that for us. So just so you know what's happening there. So one of the um, questions that came in from uh, some of the people that, it, that had sent a questions ahead of time that weren't going to be able to make it is one was that very super curious about your relationship with your mother and what do you admire about her most and what do you wish she could have done differently? I, I think of her as a yes. friend. He thinks of her as a friend. As a best friend. What do you like and what do you dislike? No, he likes everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's no dislikes there. I got to tell you, that's unusual right there. <laughs> 
Mm. Then again, she's going to see it later, right? <laughs> mm. um, well, as, as parents are tuning in that are raising a child with cerebral palsy or some other type of disability, is there something that you would like to pass on that you think would be good advice um, for parents or things that you, you, you look back and you think, man, I sure wish that had been handled differently for me? Um, I, I think that um, uh, a lot of a lot of times family want to really kind of help um, their kids as much as possible, but just like kids who don't have disabilities, sometimes you got to let them deal with things themselves so that they can learn and be independent. Because what's really important to Don is being independent and advocating for himself. So he advocates for himself not only with strangers, but he advocates for himself with his family. Like he, he's yeah. not, he does not have like a victim. He has every reason to probably blame the world or anything for his, his, his disability, but he doesn't, he genuinely doesn't. Um, he accepts who he is. He accepts mm. um, his disability. And he is, one thing I like about Don and he's very resilient, okay? Like, of course, people can paint with their hands. Of course, people, some people paint on their feet on the ground. I mean, I've seen oil painters who do it on the ground with their feet. But he said, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to use my head. And he just kept on hammering away and hammering away with this art. And um, I think he's mastered it. I, he can paint better than I can. And I have more ability mechanically than he does. And it's impressive. Everybody who sees his work just loves it. Mm -hmm. It, it I mean, I would love to see some of it in person. Uh, it shows up very well uh, on video as well, though, or on the on the site as well. Someone, Pat asked, what is the name of the tool you use to draw with and where is it sold? What the? the hard I bought a hard hat. And... Brush and put it on, take it on. Yeah, just it. Okay. Yeah, he bought a hard hat and brush and um put it on. It's his own concoction. Okay, so the it's just a regular it's not like a special drawing tool or a special brush, it's just that you attach no. it in a special way. <laughs> Is that correct? Okay. That's correct. Okay. Sarah asks, how do you feel that your art has been expressing what you need and want? I believe that's her question. How do you feel? She said it's, but I think she means art has been expressing what you need and want. Hmm. Good. Okay. Um, basically, like you said earlier, he likes to like, draw animals and lots of landscapes so what he he likes to do is he kind of likes to make the abstract so what if you were to look at his art on the website you'll notice like there was a green bear so he kind of like uses the fantasy in his mind and expresses it on the canvas it's, yeah. yeah so that I, I guess art is so i mean art means different things to different people so that's a that's a challenging question uh -huh. um, but I think based off of what we've talked about in the past, yeah. I kind of accurately described what the answer to our question is. Does you have a, do you have a predominant emotion that you experience while working with your art? <laughs> People? Yeah. Get going people get happy when they see 
<laughs> my oh. art. So the art, his his main motivation is to make people feel good and joy. <laughs> joy. It takes me time to rest you. So. That's definitely what comes through to me is is a joy and pleasure. You know, some people do art to um feel uh feel some kind of expression of some kind of deep inner emotion it seems like the deep inner emotion that's coming forward for you is joy as as you paint and pleasure, pleasure. Mm. um do you think you you've done some kind of pioneering of your art style over the last few years haven't you as it's chain well first of all do you mind telling me how old you are <laughs> <laughs> 36. 36. Okay. And it's, I, I believe you had some kind of major shift in the way the style of your painting or the way you were doing it in the last few years. Could you describe something about that for us? Uh, with the, um, with the therapy with his mom, he was able to kind of more accurately, um, uh, draw like the contours and, and the lines and the shapes on the canvas. And um, that's that's an improvement with the therapy, but also kind of the shift that he did, he has something that it's called impasto glaze, it's which is a impasto glaze. Impasto glaze. And, it, and it's just um, a combination of, um, what is it like more like <laughs> deeper, <laughs> deeper, um, colors oh. and, it, and it and it has like a, a shiny like thing it's really hard for me to describe I'm sorry but yeah it it's it's his own thing it's his oh. his um his thing that he came up mm. with that is is really unique and it's something that really pops when you see it in person mm. wow. Fun. Yeah. good so it's it you don't get you don't get the same thing looking at it on a screen you get that that glazy look um, huh. from in person. Yeah. Okay. So we can, we can expect it to be much more, much more vibrant or something in person uh. that we're seeing on the screen. Uh. Do you feel like, um, your understanding and use of the Feldenkrais method, does it help you visualize the movements that you want to explore in your art or does it help you improve your art in any way? Or does it just kind of in the background for you? background in the background so is it like second nature now <laughs> you've been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. he's been doing it for a while with his mom it's like it's not even a thought anymore because yeah, i mean that's what i'm doing it for so many years the like age of seven i don't know how you would pull it apart and know what was spelled in christ and what was your regular life uh -huh. yeah. definitely yeah I'm going to back, uh, back up in time a little bit because a lot of the parents are wanting to understand these questions about having a younger child with cerebral palsy and what that might be. So uh, Ivana uh, asked if you would have any advice that you could share with other teens who are quadriplegic with cerebral palsy. Any advice that comes out that for a teen who... Mm. You it's can do what you want. He said, yeah. you can do what you want. <laughs> and he demonstrates it with his art, yeah. you know. It seems like when I read some of the parts about that you've written on your website that this sort of resourceful uh, spirit was really um. strong in you from the get-go and trying to come up with, build things, do things, find unique ways, that that was something your <clears throat> family all supported. <sighs> yeah. His, fam his family is very supportive in his, his art endeavors. Mm -hmm. So um, Mar asked, do you, how do you set up your life to live independently? What have you got that allows your independent living situation that maybe we might not know about? can you elaborate yeah so do you have uh I, I see that you have anthony with you right now is that just somebody who's just dropped in or is An someone like anthony with you most of the time or do you have a <sighs> i have 
AIDS. Yeah. He has AIDS. So mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. me. Okay, he has AIDS with him. And, and uh, I did it. Didn't I leave by himself? He leaves by himself. He lives by himself. So he has AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, he also has a service dog. He also has a, a circle of support. Um, he actually used to live in the Bay, Air, uh, Bay Area, downtown San Jose. Mm. And um, he actually lives a real life. He goes to the bars. He has a nightlife. <laughs> Great. Yes. I love it. Thank you for breaking he, our conceptions right there. <laughs> yeah. He, um, and I'm there with him. And at first, when I first started working with him, it was more like I had to be off to the side. But he embraced me. And um, it was fun. Um, Pete, he's got a whole network of friends. Of course, he moved. We moved um, mm -hmm. to Stockton, California, just recently. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole different um, vibe and atmosphere. And he wants to bring the, his art to this side. Um, so, yeah, he um, he has his mom and his dad. No, his mom and his sister lives here in Stockton. His dad lives in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So he he's he always has the support he needs. It, it, even though he's independent, he still likes that network of support mm -hmm. and he still likes that interaction. So it's not like when he said earlier that he does things on his own, he leaves on his own. That It still matters to have people checking in on him mm -hmm. and, and supporting him. Like what I do with him is on his cell phone, it's really important. The internet's really important to him. Mm -hmm. um, is I do a lot of communication via text message. So he has a phone, he pays his own bills, right? Um, and um, I'm just, have you guys ever seen that movie Auxiliary with Kevin Hart? I haven't. It's a great movie and it's about um, a, a person who is limited and does use a motorized chair and the other guy just kind of assists him and his daily activities. Don completely lives his own life, just like me, just like you. Um, he's breaking those um, those sub those stereotypes of people with uh, cerebral palsy, like they can't do anything on their own. He's completely independent. He tells me what to do. Like he advocates for himself. He is his own human being. I just, mm -hmm. if I can make that any more clear, it's absolutely true. Okay, so. Uh, you stay if you spend the you're you're physically capable of spending the night by yourself you don't have an aid 24 7 you just have it during the uh -huh. day. he does he does have an aid 24 7 okay, 24 because 7. he needs to use other rest yes yeah. he, okay. he, he gets assistance for things because he's other than other than that he can't you know get out that's the chair and that's use the fine. yeah absolutely that's what that's mm -hmm. the kind of questions are and that so then of course your other than your service dog and probably needing a little extra room in your apartment for your wheelchair to get around or to get in and out ease of getting in and out of the shower things like mm -hmm. that that's the kind of standard setups in your apartment there's not something really super special that you needed to have <laughs> not at all okay good the only thing that's different than his apartment than other apartments is the size of the doors it's got to be accessible so that his wheelchair can get in there so um, that's important. But mm -hmm. other than that, his apartment's no different than any other apartments mm -hmm. inside this development. Did you have a lot of pain growing up or do you have a lot of pain now? No. And is, is, is there such a thing as like something you described as a, as a child that was like a really bad day for you? Uh, would you, did you have bad days that just, you just thought, gosh, I don't know. Okay. No. That just wasn't you, was it? Uh -uh. Okay. I do know, though, from talking to you that one of the things that you have an interest in is how, uh, how many things we, I don't want to say this, how many things uh, those of us who are in caretaking relationships with someone like a child who has a, a disability are kind to constantly come up with ways to help the child. And uh, you kind of have like some very stock advice I heard you give out in our, our pre uh, summit talk with each other, which 
I thought was interesting. Would you like to share that now? Do you remember what it is? Dog is memory. It's ask the child. He said it a couple of times. Ask the child. So yeah. while we were trying to problem solve these things, Donald says, ask the kid, ask the child what they think what they want. And I thought that was like, uh, you know, one of the most um, important things that perhaps we could have heard in the summit is, is, and as a piece that I think has been, we've talked a lot about respect. We've talked a lot yeah. about acceptance. We've talked a lot about um, being right with the person where they're at, but I don't think we've ever said and to this point actually ask actually ask so i really mm. really really appreciate it mm. uh pat asks is there anything in particular that you had as therapy or equipment as a child that helped you grow into an independent adult like how did this how did this independence happen for you was it oh, I got a wheelchair with when I was two. He got a wheelchair when he was two and that was instrumental in his independence. Mm -hmm. Oh, the motorized wheelchair, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've always been interested in building things it looked like. Uh, uh. So this, uh, the idea of, um, you know, b making your own hard hat, or I would assume other things that that, that kind of came along yeah. in childhood, the creativity. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you uh, recommend people do advocacy in school in particular? I don't think you've been in traditional physical therapy since you were seven, is that correct? Yeah. Physical therapy or occupational therapy? Yeah. But you have, I would think you have had to advocate for yourself in school situations or in the medical realm in some way. Um, his, his mom was definitely the mouthpiece for him in school. Um, a lot of, from what I understand, she actually told, shared this story with me, is they kept on like fitting him in a box of how they viewed his world. And so she just never gave up. Um, she just kept on fighting for his rights. And even sometimes to this day, you know, she does the same thing. And it's just, mm. until people come to the realization that we are all the same, like for instance, Don, like he's there up here, just like all of us, just with the disability, that's the only, difference and we we tr don don in his way i guess doing the painting I, when people see him painting they're just floored right um that's how he demonstrates to people that hey look mm. i'm just i'm not defined by my disability but i'm defined by who i am inside mm. yeah mm -hmm. sound good do you um I guess I would ask, what's the, what do you think then is the most significant ignorance or prejudice that you encounter all the time? Oh, goodness. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big quote. That's loaded. Yeah. That's loaded. So go, go There's on. a lot of answers. Yeah. They think yeah. I can't yeah. speak. They, I, they think I can't think. He said, they think. I can't think. Uh -huh. So they think that, you know, uh, there's something wrong with his mind. Uh, He's just like us. Uh, I uh, would go. go. I would go everywhere. I would go. go. Uh, I would go. Hey, oh, hang out. What's the first side of that word? H A. I would go. Hey, 
Hear what they say? When you say something and I do don't go with it. Um, like a disagree? Something like that? Yeah. No, that's not it. What? Say it. We got time. We don't have to be rushed. When, when the, the a say when the a when the a he thinks I would do what they want. Oh, okay. Um, people who do what I do, right? Um, they have this preconception that he is supposed to just sit there and do nothing all day. Like they make his own schedule. Um, they say, this is what time it is to go to bed. This is um, what time to go out for walks. Like they feel like he doesn't have any autonomy. So what Don is expressing is people, even people that are in the industry that I'm in, they um, assume a lot of things about him. So that's one barrier that he has to break with even people in the professional field. Mm -hmm. You know, I see that all the time. I, I have a lot of older clients that have help, uh, people who are with them 24 hours a day and or a significant amount. And I see the same thing, even in people who were, you know, um, always considered quotes abled or however they would describe themselves and it's amazing how quickly uh i don't know what that is about but how quickly we start to categorize people into these pigeonholes as if their children to to be cared for or i don't know what that is but it's got to be very hard to live with it see we don't think it's coming from a place of just like being like mean i, no, I think no, ultimately people mean. people just don't understand so yeah. it's our job to like educate them yeah. advocacy you know no, i don't think they're being mean, mean either i think they're they're totally think they're being helpful while being while actually being disabling right and that's and that's a really tricky situation it's really tricky not to be mean to them when they're actually their hearts in the right place is just you're limiting him yeah, yeah, it's very much so. Donald, do you date or have any love interest? Is that interesting to you? He, um, you know, can I say? <laughs> he had me open up a um, eHarmony account. Uh huh. Um, mm. But then you know, it's kind of spammy. Like you know, there was there was some interest, but um, mm -hmm. he just said no. He didn't. He didn't trust. There was one person that messaged him but he didn't feel right about it so he just stopped mm -hmm. but he definitely does have interest mm -hmm. and like I said at the bars like he even dances with girls I saw him do it one time. <laughs> all the girls around him he's in his wheelchair yeah. smiling like grinning mm -hmm. from ear to ear mm -hmm. putting Fabulous. On the spot. yeah that's wonderful I'm glad I'm glad mm -hmm. um so I believe you have a particular type of um, new kind of uh, modality or for your art um, that you have been working on. Could you show us one of these that I, because I, I think, um, you yeah. see that? do you mind taking it out of the plastic? So we'll be Can able I? to see it without that glare. Is that okay? That, that's it. It. He said it's okay. All right. Um, so as you guys saw on the website, those were just prints and then the originals and this he's using uh, glass blocks where it's laser um, printed on these little things. So what I've seen 
Oh, at some of the places it. you just hang people buy like hundreds of them and just hang them on their wall and it looks absolutely beautiful and it's like one of those collector things it's gorgeous it's gorgeous so you have original artwork that's over i i think a couple thousand dollars and, yeah. yeah and then you've got prints out on your site that people can purchase and and then this is even a slightly lower price point i think so that you've got a very wide range of how people can uh, enjoy your art. Is that correct? <laughs> and then you actually have uh, four people within the summit. You have uh, given us a coupon code of 25% off. That'll be below the replay of the video, by the way, the code, and then the click over to Donald's website. And within that, you can, um, uh, you can only use it once but you can use it towards everything that you put in your shopping cart. So you could do like a little house redecorating or you could do your own um, Christmas shopping if that's your thing. Yeah. Uh, can you say a little bit more about that glass process? Is that, how, how does that work? Do you know, can you say anything about it? How you got there? Yeah. That's from Sarah, she would like yeah. 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 It is a greeting. Mm. Um, there's a company that he works with mm. that um puts his um kind of like prints, the same thing. So they take his original piece and then they actually transfer that image onto these glass blocks. <sighs> And some and sometime some I put him I put a hey one here. Oh, like the this right here. Mm. Oh, you put. Oh, he puts a um a saying like on these ones. Oh, they have these little right. um affinity things on it. So I don't know if you can sign. Like I guess the name. Yeah. Oh, can you guys see? So I know the, the lights. I, the I lights kind of. I can kind of see it. So that's the name of the person. That's the. Yeah. So person. like on this side, it says "Winner knows to hush still." So like you can actually read on there. Um, well, can you read what's in all the way around then? Yes, it says, listen, so the soul can speak. Then it says, winter knows to hush still. And it says, I guess this one goes to Angie Woman Crosby. Oh. So we opened this and this is somebody. Oh, oh. I think that's who wrote that. Oh, okay. All right, good. Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a little sneak peek about that. Um, uh, and, and then Donald's signature is also on there. Okay. It's yeah, also on the, the acrylic block as well. Yeah. Mm. Good. Thank you so much. Um, I think what, what is it that you feel uh, either Anthony or Donald that we haven't covered that maybe we should, you know, tell people about that, that, that maybe we're just not intelligent enough to ask or be curious about. Mm. I just think, um, that I guess when you're in public, um, I think just interacting with people with disabilities is huge. Um, I, I don't think you should really be scared to do it, but just do it with like understanding that don't come at them, almost just treat them like a normal person, right? Because we're all normal. Well, is there such thing as normal? I just like when we're out in the public, like people act like they want to help them. You know what I mean? And it's like, I, I think it's more like, it's okay. Just say hi. He knows how to do his life, you know? So just, I mean, when people are in public, it's okay to be nice, but at the same time, just don't be too overly nice. And I, I, I hope you guys understand what I mean by that because it just, it comes off as awkward and weird. It's so kind of presumptive, I, I think, isn't it? It's kind of a pre presumption that the person's just been waiting for you to show up to help them, which is somewhat unlikely. 
Mm-hmm. I, I do think it's complicated though, uh, and you all can correct me because I, I'm thinking about clients that I have that uh, tell me, you know, on a regular basis how much they appreciate that someone comes and gets the door so they can get in or get something off of a, a, a tall area of the shelf for them. So I think it's mm-hmm. so individual uh, that it also gets a little bit complicated for for us to know, but I think, I think I would go, it would go back to Don, Don, you go by Don, not Donald. Is that, I hear Anthony calling mm-hmm. Don. Can I, okay. Um, it goes back to Don, what you said, which is ask, you know, maybe it's, mm-hmm. it, it would that instead of presuming that you need help yeah. and after saying hello or whatever, maybe saying is, did you need any help with that door or did you need any help with yeah. the text? That is that is perfect explanation of what Don likes. Perfect. Okay. Sarah asked, "How do you stay positive with the challenges you have?" And Sarah has um, cerebral palsy, uh, so I hope that's okay, Sarah, that I said that since you've been so uh, so present in the summit. So she she that that question is coming from somebody who has maybe some some kind of shared experience answer. with you. I'm not sure that anybody has a real shared experience with each other. Okay. Um, We did actually talk a little bit about this um, and how he stays positive is just living life, um, setting goals, um, not not being defined by your limitations, but surpassing them. Don't don't let people bring you down. Like Don is like so ambitious. Okay, and he's con- he's a learner too, so he's <laughs> learning a lot, and I think that builds him up as well. So there's a confidence that comes with just you know making goals, mm. you know. So goal making, mm. like being a being a painter and, and surviving in this business, it's very cutthroat, and there's like it takes a lot of um, commitment to be on this trail of, as an artist because it's just trying to be found out and actually kind of etching your place in his- history. So mm-hmm. um, make, make your goals big. And even if you don't make, even though if you don't hit those goals, even if you just get a little bit below it, it's rewarding. So mm-hmm. I, think, I think the thing is just, he's always making goals yeah. and he's sticking with them. Oh. And, and that's what everybody should do because <laughs> it, it just builds you up. Uh-huh. But hopefully that answered your question. Mm-hmm. It does. I hope it answers Sarah's question. So when you, when you, uh, I, when you got your artwork displayed like at the Xanadu, that, that, that didn't happen accidentally then, you're saying? You had a goal to get it displayed somewhere, I'm betting. Uh, no, he advertised. He emails, phone calls, mm-hmm. grit, drudgery, grit and grind, just going out there and getting it. Oh. Okay. I like mean, everybody it, else. Cynthia, I know you work really hard to, you know what it is. I do you know, know exactly what this is, what it just is. like everybody else. Yeah. yeah, I know what this is. And then uh, as you think about having your own art studio or gallery, I think it's what you called it in the, uh, yeah. you're, you're starting to at least dream about what the steps that that might be, or maybe you're actually even further than the dreaming. <laughs> He has his own business yeah. already. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's clear that he has his own business. I, he's I, he's, man, he's, man, he's manifesting it mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. He's make he makes little changes, little tweaks, mm-hmm. like moving to different places. His name is in uh, San Jose. He goes to the college out there. You went to college, uh, mm-hmm. San, o- San Jose State, or did you go to community mm-hmm. city? Okay, so you have your associates, right? Mm. So yeah, he finished a, a college degree in associates in art. Sure. And now, you know, he's, he's up here finding new challenges. Mm. Yeah, so he's not, a, he's not afraid to make little adjustments mm. um, to get where he needs to be. Now, I know you uh, watched or read the transcripts for the four presentations today. And I think the one presentation that maybe you had the most response to was Brett Schaub's. Brent Schaub's, who is, uh, had a problem with hearing for most of his life. And I think you really mostly noticed the difference in your personality and Brent's personality. 
and you talked about because Brent talks about um, really taking a lot of years before he accepted his disability or accepted help. Yeah. Does that describe you? Mm -hmm. not a, it does not subscribe you so you so even though you wouldn't want strangers coming up and offering help and it, just because they like feel sorry for you or what or assume you're not also adverse to taking help mm -hmm. yeah and like um although his his disability is visible so he feels like it's a little different than oh. um brett shops like people can see it like they're looking <laughs> at right. him you know what i mean when he's out in public so he, yeah. so every disability is different mm -hmm. and we got to accept the diversity of disability and diversity of people because everybody has their own situation. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want to be clustered um, yeah. with other yeah. people. He respects other people and their disabilities, mm -hmm. but he doesn't want to feel like he's a part of a group of disab disabled people just to be straight up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. He's but he's but he when um, we were in San Jose, he was really clear with about that with me mm -hmm. that he, although he appreciates and understands that he's a part of a community, he's his own person and he doesn't want to be defined by that community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think that the one of the early things that you you said in so many words already tonight, but said to to me uh in the pre-summit planning was was that if you if sort of like if you had a mission which you you don't you 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 you're an artist and that's what your thing is is you're an artist mm -hmm. but if you had a mission it might be to kind of convince people like me or try to make clear to people like me, myself that you're not you can do a lot you can mm -hmm. do a lot mm -hmm. yeah definitely mm -hmm. And that this idea of a wheelchair or anything else stopping people does not is is a is, is mostly a fallacy. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Okay, well, I'm thinking I'm going to let you guys go, and I'm going to wrap up a little bit about these other presentations because I don't think that part was that interesting to you. So I'm going to let you off the hook on that, mm. and then. Uh, um, just let you know how what a pleasure it was to have you here, both of you. I really appreciate you you being with us. Um, I think it'll be very helpful to all of us to uh, get a chance to examine our own uh, preconceived ideas and and let things sort of bounce around in our head about what we might be assuming or. Uh, and also assuming for parents, assuming about the future of their, for their children, that they might be, you know, that they might be assuming things that aren't, that are really aren't true about the future of their children. So I, I think it's very helpful what you've done for us here today, Don. <sighs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. It was great. Thank <laughs> you very much. I would everybody say goodbye to <sighs> Don and I'll wrap you up a little bit with these other discussions. <sighs> Yeah. Okay, so let me just get a, I do want to say something about the other discussions, even though we ended up not having a normal panel talk that was extremely powerful, but I also don't, oh, also for people who've been using these as uh, kind of a way to get an overview of what else has uh, been presented during the day, because I know that some people are actually watching them in that way. And these were four incredible talks again today. I want to start actually with um, uh, Brent Schaub, since I already mentioned him. Brent Schaub is a Feldenkrais practitioner who uh, has a hearing uh, challenge, and he is putting together um, a process. So not only does he describe some about his journey, but he's putting together an incredible process to help people who are either deaf or have a hearing impairment uh, at, a, at a hard of hearing, the capacity to do awareness through movement lessons online and not be sitting there watching the captions because you can't do awareness through movement lessons really and read the captions because you can't stay in your own sensation. So I think for those of us, um, even if the if you even if you don't have someone in your life who fits that 
characteristics. I think watching his process around how he's thinking about um, bringing lessons to this, this population to make them accessible, right? The whole issue of accessibility um, is really inspiring. Um, we also had Carla Oswell Reed, who gave, I think, one of the most uh, practical presentations of the summit with a tremendous amount of information about what you can do with um, your child with cerebral palsy in a way that makes your life easier and your child's life easier. I just thought it was a really incredible uh, presentation of practicality and um, uses everyday life experiences for you to be able to uh, help your child. It would apply, however, uh, although there were some things that were very specific that would I'd apply more to a child who has spasticity than in other situations. Most of what she shared, uh, the principles and even a lot of the ideas are just incredibly usable, and I just highly encourage it. Uh, Audrey Deshednez, oh my gosh, that is a heart-touching, inspiring in a deep, deep way. Um, these challenges of uh, having a child in your life, and in her case, her child lived to be in her 30s, but was thought that she would die fairly young. And so she outlived the expectancy by quite a lot. So she died a couple of years ago. And I thought Audrey did a really beautiful job for parents who are either starting out or in the middle of a journey with a child where you're very concerned about what their future might be of showing us what a rich life she and her daughter um, have had together and uh, how her daughter found meaning in life and pleasure in life and also how Audrey herself found the supports that she needed the uh, communities that she needed how she has chosen to use advocacy as a way to empower herself and how she found the strength to navigate waters that she didn't think she would ever have the strength to it she said at one point it, it's hard i think is how she said it and it turns out it's all okay it was very very wonderful for me and then carol henderson has a five-point plan that she calls for after lockdown so but we have been getting notes from parents saying that they would like more help on how to deal with their emotional state. Carol Henderson has got a huge amount in that talk on how to work with your emotions as well. And really, really powerful uh, set of steps that you can use, whether it's uh, after lockdown or you're at some stage of uh, concern or grieving or anger or whatever, however you define that in your life around it could be around anything, really. I thought it was a really helpful five-point plan, but it's, of course, stated here within the context of uh, this particular summit, so usable in that way. I'm going to look to see if anybody else has any ending comments or questions over here in the panel before I say get ready to say goodbye. Again, I hope that you will uh, be back with us for the bonus day sessions. And they're all going to be good, just excellent. Do the ones you can. But if you're a parent who is looking for more detailed information about what you can do with your child, Carla will be widening her scope to answer questions beyond the issue of just cerebral palsy. But uh, I really feel she's got the skill set that she can, she can probably provide an answer to most anything coming through. And then um, we are going to have an Encore Day for you. And I think on Encore Day, we're going to have a little closing circle together at noon on um, that Friday at noon. So it'll be one where we can all see each other. Liz Penny, who's been uh, leading our community circles, is going to lead us in that. You'll get to meet the team that's behind the scenes. And then you'll get a chance to share what this summit has meant for you. So Liz Penny will be meeting, leading that. Um, Gosh, I can't believe it's the last one. Thank you so much. Of course, I'm going to get to see you again on bonus day, and I'll get to see you in the Facebook group, and I will get to see you at the closing party, I hope. So be there.
Okay. Thanks, everybody.